Hello everybody and welcome to another video in this Linux for Programmers tutorial series. In this video we are going to be going through users and groups and talking about how we can assign specific users to groups and how we can change those users and groups permissions. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started and talk about users and groups. So right now we are actually signed in as the root user to our Linux machine. Now the root user you can think of as the administrator or the super user, but essentially this root user has access to everything. So it can modify all files, it can change everything. It is just the most powerful user on a Linux device. So obviously if multiple people are going to be using our Linux machine, we don't want to give them root access. We need to create a new user for them. And in fact, Linux is actually a very unique operating system because multiple people can be signed into the same device at the same time. So we can actually have multiple people using the exact same Linux machine uh, concurrently or in parallel. So at the exact same time. So that's interesting. Uh, that's definitely not the same on something like Mac or Windows, although I'm sure there's probably a way to do something like that, but it's definitely not a native behavior. Anyways, so now what I want to do is I want to show you first of all how we can create a new user, how we can delete a new user, and then how we can actually deal with groups, change permissions of users and all of that. So something to keep in mind is that the commands I'm going to show you are only going to work as the root user. There is ways to get them to work as other users, but um, at this point in time, since root user is the only user that we have, it's only going to work for the root user also because root user has permission to run all of this stuff. So the first command that I want to show you is add user. Now this one is really straightforward. All you do to add a new user is type add user followed by the name of the user. And then you press enter and it's going to show us a bunch of prompts and I'll show you that in a second. Now, another thing or another command that you can run is user add. Now, I don't want to call this an older command, but this is a lower level command uh, where you're going to have to do a lot more manual stuff if you add a user this way. So I would just stay away from this one. You're welcome to use it or look it up if you want. Uh, but add user is kind of the preferred method of adding a user now. So we're going to say add user and then Tim. When I do this, notice it's going to say adding user Tim added new group Tim, added new user Tim with group Tim, created home directory uh, for home slash Tim, and then copying files from this etc skel. This is just like a skeleton of this user. You don't really have to know what that is. Now it's prompting us for a password. So we have to make the default password for this user. So let's do that. I'm just going to make it one, two, three, four. And there we go. We now have added the password. Now it's going to ask us to fill in some details. All of these details here are optional. You don't need to fill them in, but I would recommend that you at least put a name. So I'm going to put Tim Rasika. That is my name. I'm not going to put any numbers here. Uh, and then it's going to ask you if this information is correct. I'm going to say yes. And there you go. So that is all you need to make a new user. Now you have another user named Tim. Now, if you want to view all of the users on the system, what you can do is you can type cat then slash etc slash pass WD. We looked at cat extensively in the last video. This is going to print out the contents of the etc pass WD file. This file stores information about all of the users on the system. You're going to notice when I run this that there is a lot more users than just Tim and root. But if you look at the very bottom, you can see the Tim user is here. So you don't need to pay attention to all of these other users. There's actually a lot of users on the system that are what we call system users. And they're just there to make sure that applications and processes have the correct permission and everything runs properly. Anyways, let's clear this. We now have the Tim user. Now I'm going to show you how we can sign in as the Tim user. This is really straightforward. Then we'll delete the Tim user, add the Tim user to a group and, and talk about all these other things as well. And by the way, at this point in time, I haven't explained groups yet. Don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. So now if we want to log out of this so we can log into our other user, we can simply close the session just by pressing the X button or we can actually manually type the log out command. So we'll just type log out like this. By the way, if it prompts you to type exit instead of log out, just type exit, then type log out afterwards. I don't really know exactly why that's happening, but sometimes that does happen when I type this command. So anyways, press log out. It should just close the session for you. This would work on Mac as well. And then we can open up putty again and start a new session, but this time log in as our new user, which I've called Tim uh, unexpectedly closed. Okay. That's interesting. Let me just try this again. I think I might've clicked on the wrong one. Let's try this. There we go. Okay. So this is working now. All right. So now I'm going to sign in as Tim. So log in as Tim, it's going to ask me for my password. I'll put that in and now notice that we log into the server successfully uh, and all is good. We signed in as this user. So I'm just going to start by clearing the screen here 
And now I'm going to show you that this user does not have the same permissions that our pseudo user has. So actually, first of all, you can just see that our working directory is slash home slash Tim. This is our home directory for this user. This is where we're going to store all of this user's files. And I'll just show you quickly that if I actually try to modify, say, the root user's files, I'm going to run into an issue. So if I go cd dot dot and I cd again dot dot. Now you see we're in this folder. I'm going to cd into the root folder and notice it says permission denied. I cannot access or even read that folder because I do not have permissions to do so. So this is the idea behind users. Obviously, the Tim user now has very limited permissions, can only do stuff inside of its home folder. So anyways, that was how you create a new user and sign in as that user. I'm going to log out again, log back in as the root, and then we're going to talk about groups and modifying permissions for a specific user. All right, so I'm logged back in as the root user. Now I'll quickly show you the command to delete a user. I'm not actually going to run it because, well, I don't want to delete the user, but to delete a user, you simply type del user, then the name of the user. This will remove that user's group. It will remove the user, it will remove the home folder. This will do everything that you need to do. So del user, then the name just deletes that user. Now, the next thing I'll show you quickly is how to change a user's password. So let's say we actually want to change one of the users that's not our own password. We can type P A S S W D. So pass WD, then the name of the user whose password we want to change in this case, Tim, it's going to ask us for the new password. I'll just make it the same and we are good. It updates our password. Now, if we just type pass WD, notice this is actually going to prompt us to update our password. So I could change our password if we want to, but actually, I guess I'm going to have to now that I've done this. Uh, so let me just type in the same thing that I've used previously. All right, so now I have updated the password, but that is how you change the password for a user or for yourself. Now, when we had signed in as Tim, we could have typed pass WD and we would have been able to change our own user's password with that command. So something useful, to keep in mind. All right, so now I want to show you uh, or talk to you, sorry, about groups. So what is a group? Well, a group is essentially a collection of users that all have the same permission. So if we're talking about programmers here, for example, imagine you need to have access to all of the Docker files on a system or, or something like that. Then you would probably be added to the Docker group. And there may be a few other developers that were added to the Docker group as well. And that way you guys all have the exact same permissions because you are a part of that Docker group. You can do all of these things related to Docker. Now, maybe you are a special user. You also need access to some specific files on the system. You get added to some, you know, admin group or some pseudo group or whatever it is. And now all of a sudden you have access to whatever that group's permissions are. So that is the idea behind groups. And now we need to talk about two things, which is the fact that a user has a primary group and a secondary group. So by default, whenever you create a user, and we did see this, it's going to be assigned to a group that is unique and is named the same thing as the user. So for example, the root user has a primary group, which is called root. That Tim user has a primary group, which is called Tim. Now, the reason you have this differentiation between a primary group and a secondary group is the following. First of all, you only have one primary group. You can have up to 15 secondary groups. But every single time a file is created in Linux, it is said to be owned by the person's primary group that created it. So in this case, as user root, our primary group is root. So when we make a file, it is said to be owned by root or you know belongs to the root group. That means that anyone who is a part of that root group is able to access, modify, and just has permissions over that file. So by having a unique primary group for each person, each person is able to have their own individual files that no other user other than the root user or a pseudo user that has like a ton of permissions can access. So hopefully that's clear. But then secondary groups, you can belong to multiple secondary groups, which define what permissions you have in the operating system or just as a user in general. Now, there can be files that are owned by secondary groups. And what that means is that anyone in that group is able to access, modify and, and do whatever with that file. So I know this is kind of confusing to see because I'm just explaining it, but just know that each user has their unique primary group, at least they should have that. And that group is typically named the exact same as their user, and they can have up to 15 secondary groups. And this will give them specific permissions, allow them access to files and, and things like that. So that is the idea behind groups. So we already know what the primary group is, but now I'm going to show you how we can make secondary groups and assign users into them. Then I will show you how we can change the permissions for users and groups. 
So first of all, to add a group is really basic. You can type add group and then simply the name of the group. So in this case, let's add, say, a Python group for all of our Python developers on this server. So add group Python. See, it says adding group Python. This is the ID of this group, so 1002. Now I will show you how to add a user into this group. So you're going to type the following. This is user mod. Sorry, not mod, but mod hyphen a this stands for append which means append the following group to this user you're going to say user mod hyphen a hyphen g which says group then you're going to type the group name so in this case python and then the user that you want to add to this group which in this case is tim so user mod hyphen a again stands for append hyphen g stands for a group and then the username we're going to type that there we go all of a sudden tim has now been assigned to the user or to the python group so if we want to see what groups a user is assigned to, what we can do is say groups and then type the name of the user, in this case, Tim, and we see that Tim belongs to the Tim group and the Python group. If we want to see what groups a user belongs to or the current user belongs to, sorry, we just type groups and this will show us that we belong to the root group. Now I'll quickly show you how we can remove someone from a group as well. So to remove someone, we're going to type G pass and then WD hyphen D, then the username that we want to remove. So in this case, Tim, and then the group name, which in this case is going to be Python. Now, I know this is kind of a strange command, like you would think it would just be, you know, Dell group or remove user from group or something. Uh, but G pass WD hyphen D Tim Python, hit enter, and then says removing user Tim from the group Python. Anyways, let's add Tim back into that Python group because I actually do want him in there. And now what I'm going to show you how to do is actually set permissions for groups. So that's kind of the basics on adding and removing groups. But now it's like, how do you actually make a group unique, right? What's the point of a group if it doesn't have its own permissions? So all of the permissions uh, for groups are stored in what's known as a pseudoers file. Now, this pseudo earth file is stored in a specific location on the operating system. I'm actually not even going to show it to you. But to modify this, what you do is you type vi sudo. So you do have to be a user that has sudo permissions to modify this file. But you type vi sudo. This will open the pseudo earth file, and then you can actually start modifying it. So when I do that, notice it opens up what's known as Nano. This is a text editor in Linux. Um, I will show you how to use text editors in later videos in more detail. But to navigate this, you simply use the arrow keys. And then you can see all of the commands to save, write out, execute, all of that um, in the bottom here. So this is control and then whatever the key is. Anyways, all we're going to do here is we're going to leave all these defaults the same. You can modify specific things where the comments are here. Uh, but this is where we're actually going to change or set permissions for groups and for users. So if you want to give a specific user permissions and you don't really care about the group, then what you do is you simply write the name of the user. So in this case, Tim, and then something in the following syntax. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the syntax here because there's a lot in terms of how you give permissions, uh, but this is kind of the basics to add a permission to a user. You say all and then equals and then you simply type the name of the command that you want to allow this user to run. But you need to actually give the exact path to this command. So let's say I want to allow my user Tim to run the top command. Now, what the top command does is simply list out all of the running processes on the machine. And by default, this user cannot run this command. What you would do is you would type the path to this command. So the path is actually slash USR slash bin and then slash top. What this will do is say, OK, Tim, this user Tim now has access to this command, which is the top command. So that's all you have to do if you want to add specific commands to a user. You will separate these by commas. So you can say, you know, the next command that you want to add after this one, then comma, so on and so forth. So that's how you do it for a specific user. It's going to be in this kind of format. Again, you have to look this up if you want to do a lot of specific stuff. But this is the sudoers file. You can see it's an etc slash sudoers.tmp. Now, if we want to save this file, so say that's all we want it to do, what we can do is we can type control S and that's going to write 31 lines and then control X. And there we go. We actually saved that file. Now, if you had just pressed control X, it should have prompted you to actually save the file or to not save the file. But anyways, this should be good. So now if I open up vsudo again, you can see that this is saved and this Tim permission is here. So now let's just try something. Let's log out. Let's sign back in as Tim and let's see if we can run this command now. Okay, so I'm signed back in as Tim now. I'm going to run the top command. And I'm going to see if this works. 
and it does. We can now see all of the processes running on this machine. I'm going to do a separate video on how all of this works and what these processes are. Uh, but anyways, just wanted to show that for now. So anyways, let's quit that with control C. Let's clear the screen. Now I'm going to log out, log back in as root, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we just saw that that did indeed work. Now what I'm going to do is add some more commands to allow the Python group to execute. So instead of adding these uh, permissions on the user themselves, I'm going to add it on the group and show you how that works. So let's open up uh, vi sudo again. This opens the sudo errors file. Now what I'm going to do is rather than setting user privileges, I'm going to set group privileges. So you can see that the comments are kind of telling you where you should do this, but it says allow members of group uh, sudo to execute any command. That's what this means. What I'm going to do under here is I'm now going to make another uh, kind of like group permission. So I'm going to say the percent sign, which stands for group. Then I am going to say Python, which is the group that I just created. I'm going to say all, which stands for all members and then equals and then list out any of the commands that I want to allow the Python group to use. So a great example of this would be to execute the Python interpreter. I don't know if you need permission to do that, but that might be something that people in the Python group would need to be able to do. Anyways, I'm just going to add some kind of random commands in here. You might not even really know what they do, but we'll just allow uh, members in the Python group to execute the USR slash bin slash LS command. Also, we will allow them to run the USR slash bin slash less command. And then finally, we'll allow them to run the USR slash bin slash APT command. Now, you might be wondering where I'm getting all of these locations from. You can kind of notice that most of them are just in bin for the standard commands. But I am going to show you a command in one second that allows you to find the location of a command. So it's a command that helps you find a command. Anyways, I'm going to save this. So control S and then control X. And this will now give my Python users uh, permission to do this. All right. So now I'm going to show you that command that allows you to find the location of a command. So let's say we wanted to know where the cat command was, right? And in fact, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but anyways, we want to know where that is. We don't know the location. All we do is we type which and then cat. And this will tell us location to cat, which is in user bin and cat. So if you want to give permission to a specific command, don't know where it is, type which, then the command name, and it will tell you. So anyways, now that we have that permission, let's sign out, let's sign back in as Tim, and let's make sure that that is actually working. All right, so now we're signed back in as Tim. Let's test out these commands. So we will try the apt command. Looks like that one is working. Didn't say we don't have permission to use that. So that's great. The LS command. Well, there's nothing in this folder, so I guess that's just not working, but we can use that. In fact, I think we could use that one before. But anyways, just was trying to show you how we could add commands. Then the less command. Let's see what this one does. Well, it says we are missing a file name, but I can do something like less and then slash etc slash group. And notice that it tells me all of the groups on this system. So anyways, the idea of this is not to you know, talk about any specific commands or anything, it's just to show you how you can actually give permission to specific users and to specific groups, how you assign users to groups, and the difference between a primary and secondary group. Anyways, right now we're actually in something called Vim. I'm not going to talk about this right now, I want to talk about it later. But to get out of this, what you need to type is uh, escape and then colon and then WQ. When you type WQ after the colon, it closes that window. So again, colon WQ, uh, that's what you need to type to get out of that window. That always confused me a lot when I first started working on Linux. Anyways, that is kind of the basics on users and groups. So I just realized I forgot to show you guys how to delete a group. So I'm going to show you that quickly now before we end. So to delete a group is super simple. All you type is del group and then the name of the group. Let's try to delete the Python group and notice it says removing group Python done and all is good. So that is how you delete a group. And this has been users and groups. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next Linux for programmers video.